Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Dr. Jackson Crawford. I'm a professional translator of Old Norse, having translated most of the main sources of Norse mythology into already published, or soon to be published, editions that are easily approachable by the average speaker of English. And I've also taught at numerous universities in the United States, including Berkeley, UCLA, and Colorado, in subjects such as Old Norse language and myth. Plus, I maintain a popular YouTube channel about these subjects. Now, what I want to talk about today is why, if you need something translated into Old Norse, say for a movie, a television show, a game, something like that, you need somebody who is a professional. Google Translate's not going to help you, and neither is a dictionary you're going to find online. For my references, I did work on Disney's Frozen. The runes that you can see in the book and on the graves in that movie are written by me in Younger Futhark, the Viking Age runic alphabet, and really do say things in Old Norse, or specifically Old Norwegian. I also have worked on American Gods, where I taught actors, including Ian McShane, their Old Norse lines, and I am a major consultant on a major project I can't talk about right now. Uh, but that will become clear probably by the middle of 2020 and uh, also uh, various other uh, small things or small projects throughout the years, in addition to my academic work. Now let me talk about why Old Norse is something you need a professional to translate. Uh, there's a lot of things that will trip people up in Old Norse, and it's not just its famously complicated grammar. Often, one word in Old Norse is equivalent to multiple words in English or vice versa. If you just use Again, a dictionary, a translation service such as Google Translate, or somebody who has a very small ex time in experience with this language, they may not know that they don't need to say make strong in Old Norse, they can say styrkja. They may not know that they don't need something, some, they don't need to say both words and make happy, they can say kledja. But they may also not know that the word to in English, T-O, as in um, I did this, to inform you is three words in Old Norse, til thesat, right? These are errors that can only be prevented by someone who truly inhabits the language from decades of reading, studying, teaching, and translating it. Consider a phrase like new moon. In English, that means the dark of the moon. In Old Norse, the new moon is the full moon. If, as I can imagine many situations uh, where this would be, be valid. If you have some kind of uh, lunar calendrical statements or some kind of discussion about the, the time of night, you need to know that kind of thing uh, so that people who know Old Norse don't make fun of you. There are terms in Old Norse that are barely distinct um, that people don't think about today. For example, there's barely any way to translate really what is conveyed in English by the word warrior. Warrior or soldier in English means a professional fighter, but in Old Norse there's very few people who are professional fighters because everybody is a fighter, just basically seasonally or, or as needed. Your free men are going to fight uh, to, to raid neighbors or raid enemies or to fight a uh, territorial dispute or just at the drop of a hat because someone insulted them, they're not necessarily going to gather into ranked armies and navies to fight under a flag. That's a fairly late development in Northern Europe and not one that Old Norse is well prepared to talk about without borrowing some other languages. So for realistic Viking Age language, really instead of warrior, you just need to be saying man or often drenger, a compliment for a man that conveys a man of great courage. Now, there's also phrases of politeness and such that don't exist in Old Norse. We don't know how someone would necessarily say please, as in please do this for me. There's not, there's certainly no one single word, but a professional who understands the language knows how to convey the same thing, how to make a request a little bit more polite, how to add those shades and connotations. Uh, where again, just looking up in a dictionary, 
is it going to help you? I mentioned that the grammar of Old Norse is famously complicated. Here's an example. If you are saying, gracious ones, help us, there are several problems in the English sentence that the Old Norse translation needs to address. Gracious, are they male or female, or are they a mix? Depending on which one of those, that word gracious is going to be different. Help us, the help is going to be different depending on if we're talking to two, gracious ones or three or more. And then help us. Is the us two or is it three? These are things that you're not necessarily going to think about if you don't know that they're there to be thought about. There's culturally or mythically foreign expressions and ideas. For example, in English we often have a Greek-derived notion of fate as something that's woven based on the behavior of the Moirai or Greek fates who weave our fates. But in Old Norse, the Norns carve fate. So it's more culturally appropriate to talk about how someone's fate has already been carved rather than woven, which is an, an image that people often are tempted to use in Old Norse because we analogize the Norse too much to the Greeks, especially to the Spartans. There are idioms that you can't translate directly into Old Norse. Walk it off, right? To translate that literally into Old Norse, something like gaktu av uh, means nothing like walk it off in, in English. But there is an expression that does mean something fairly similar. Taktu litit av, take little of it. Uh, meaning again, like walk it off, right? Le leave it alone, it's not something you need to obsess over. It takes an expert to know that kind of thing or to know that you don't smell something in Old Norse, you draw the weather from it, right? That's a, that's a special cultural note uh, that sounds very genuine to someone who knows the language um, that Google Translate knows nothing about. It's also an expert's uh, sole province to know what goes with what in terms of earlier and later stages of the language. The resources you're going to find online are often modern Icelandic, and modern Icelandic is sort of mythically close to Old Norse. It's certainly not identical to Old Norse, but the language has changed remarkably little in a thousand years, that's true. But it's not identical. It has changed. And so, if you're using modern Icelandic resources on the one hand, because it's some of what you found, you've got some of those tabs open, and you've got some Old Norse resources, and that's some of what you found, you've got some of those tabs open, and you start mixing them, it's going to sound ridiculous to anyone who knows one or the other or both. So, for example, you might use daitur as your plural of daughters, but then turn around and for father, uh, the plural you have is fetr. Daitur as modern Icelandic, the Old Norse would be dötr. Fedr is Old Norse, the modern Icelandic is fedur. If you mix and match from old and modern, and you're not going to know what those are without a good familiarity with the language, you're going to end up with a product that's anachronistic within itself. You're also probably not going to know about cultural contextual things like the fact that there is a named gate of Valhol. You don't need to say the gate of Valhol, you just need to say Valgrind. You may not know, and this is, this is one that big television series have gotten wrong, that the letter that looks like a P with an extra bar on top is the th sound, like in think, or thin, or Thor, not the P. So this name is Thorun, not Porun. It means Thor love, by the way. Lovely girl's name. But you see what I mean about how you have to inhabit a language in order to translate it effectively? If you go to Google Translate and you say, here is just a sample line uh, from something that uh, was given to me by a Patreon supporter. May my soul be plucked from the battlefield in the hand of a Valkyrie. There are so many things here that are not normal in Old Norse. I'll come back to that. But what are you going to get if you put this into Google Translate to put it into Icelandic? Something that, by the way, big movies have done even ones where they had better advice. Here's what you would see. Google Translate and Icelandic, at least in December 2019. And I started off doing modern Icelandic pronunciation and slipped back into Old Norse, but whatever. 
Now, here's the problems with this. Soul is a foreign word in Old Norse. Not just that specific word, sal, which is borrowed from Old English uh, after the conversion, but the very concept of the being that is separated from the body at death is not found in pre-Christian Norse sources. They talk about the person going to Valhalla, the person going to hell, not just their soul leaving their body and going to Valhalla or hell. The passive voice here is very foreign to the way Old Norse would talk. So is the fact that you need three words, maybe plucked, to convey what Old Norse needs one word for. So what I would do with this is I would make it active. I would make the subject in Old Norse, hund valkyriu, Valkyrie's hand. For the verb may pluck, I would just say roiti, may pluck, right, that's conveyed by one word in Old Norse, me from the battlefield, or vigvele, out of the battlefield. Much simpler, much more direct, much more culturally true. But you don't know that if you're relying on Google Translate. You need more than a passing knowledge of the language to do this right. That's true even if you started studying Old Norse and you know something like, for example, that masculine nouns take S as uh, their possessive form, much like we do in English, right? Raven, raven, stone, stones. Same deal in Old Norse. Robin, ravens, stain, stains. But you need to know what to remove before you put that S on, and it's not always the same thing. So, for example, in a name like Sigurdur, if you're going to add the genitive possessive S, which isn't always a genitive possessive ending, but for the sake of this presentation, Sigurs, you have to knock that R off. But Baldr, you don't knock the R off. Baldrs is Baldr's the possession. Something's possessed by Baldr. Hire an expert. Talk to somebody who actually knows the language. We really are uh, quite happy to help out. And uh, I specifically uh, really enjoy working with the people who are renewing the old sagas and making new ones. For now, from beautiful Colorado, let me wish you all the best.